Now, you've actually evolved the technology and the readings to the point where you can look at a uh, discharge image and, and pinpoint it to different parts of the body, uh, connecting it with the uh, meridian system. Can you tell us a little bit about how that all works and how you actually get the, uh, the ways that you do your interpretations? Yeah, exactly. Well, the uh, development was done in Russia at the State University in St. Petersburg. It is Konstantin Korotkov uh, and his team who developed this technology. And they also developed the software for reading the uh, uh, GDV images. Now, what they do is basically they use uh, the knowledge from the meridian system where you have a connection between your fingertips and the different organs in the body. So we take readings from all the 10 fingertips and then the software is analyzing these readings and connects the fingertips and certain sectors in these fingertips, that I can show you in the presentation later on, uh, to the organs in the body. So we are able to analyze both on an organ level but also on an overall energy level of the whole being. So now we're going to do a quick demonstration of the GDB camera and show you what it does. Well, Ron, we're going to take your finger images first. We start with the right thumb. You uh, put your right thumb Just in. Right here like uh, this. Yeah, and find the glass, put it on the glass and have a slight contact without okay. pressing too hard. Then press the button. We take the image. It's going to make a short beep and there we go. Mm -hmm. To the next index finger, please. So we take the uh, different images here. Mm -hmm. Which is showing the, the principle of working. Now we switch uh, to the right hand. So it's kind of like a game of twist. In a in a real uh, setup, we would then correct some of the images because we get some light in here. But this is just for demonstration purposes. So th this is about the time it takes for taking these ten images and then. And this is measuring photons coming off my actual Exactly. Fingers. What we see here is the photons. We can switch from this energy. This is the original image. This is what the camera is seeing. I can zoom in large. So here we got some light in. And this is, of course, a, a capture error. In a usual setup, we would have to redo this image, but not right now. It's just for demonstration purposes. So we can then save these images and close. We are done with this capture. We go on, we can do some corrections if needed, and then we can let the software calculate your energy field. Now we see different areas here, and the red curve shows where your current energy state is. Green area is healthy man of your age, age would be in this area. Red means energy deficiency, yellow means energy excess. We have the different organs that we can analyze in the software. We have the left hand side and the right hand side images and we see that Ron is in the green area everywhere so quite a healthy man. We see that your energy field is quite stable. We don't have any blockages, any holes in the energy field so to say. We have to be very careful. This is not an aura. Some people treat this as an aura. This is a computerized image of your energy field coming from your fingertips, nothing else. Um, we can also use the side pro projections to see any imbalances, maybe in the back area. Also a number of numerical values, and this is what I used for analyzing the whole class. I used the numerical values, not so much the images, because the numerical values, they give me a chance to see the absolute value, but also the tendency during the training. So I've got a clean bill of health. Yes, <laughs> this is basically the, the principle that we use when analyzing energy fields. It's now, when you do this with the, with the EMF, you're getting definite readings that are showing that there's some kind of changes happening. Now, you get those kind of similar readings with some other energy techniques also, right? Yes, that is true. I mean, depending on the influence that we have on a human being, it could be a therapy, it could be um, an exercise, it could be the influence of another human being. We see differences, yes. But what is important is... Do we see the same changes over and over? Do we see the same changes in the mm -hmm. students? And do we see, especially in training classes, do we see cases where some or all of the students come to a certain level of balance? And this is actually what we see with the EMF balancing technique. 
So you've been able to prove with a variety of different modalities that this technology is doing an effective job of documenting a very real change in the human energy field. The energy work itself is a process and it's repeatable. And there's a certain focus I have in every class I go into, and I teach this all over the world, so from Japan to Europe to South America to the United States, all these different cultures, the focus is to know the core of the being, to work with this pattern called the universal calibration lattice. And I always know when we go through these classes, there's always a time where there's change going on and individuals are adjusting. But all these years, I've been teaching 13 years now international, 20 years. By the end of the class, I always know that everybody is at a certain space, at a certain place energetically when they leave with the tool. I had no idea that we could actually prove this with this kind of testing. So you're, you're pretty amazed by what's happening here. But this is exciting. Not only that, I'm finding the results encouraging to me to continue on and to grow and to make things even stronger. So it, it's been a very nice, um, we make figure eights, a very reciprocal education that's going on. Now here's a question for you guys. If you, if you were in a double blind situation where you were practicing EMF and you were making predictions and, and assumptions about what the effect mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the work is, and you were taking measurements of the EMF and you were interpreting through your technology what the results of the work is, how closely do you think those two would match if you guys came together not knowing of each other, came together and, and compared yeah. results? I'd like to answer that first because for me, I had a job to do, and this was the beginning. This was the first time I was working with this energy. I even forgot that Lutz was measuring. We weren't even really interacting. So to me, it was this double-blind study. I didn't even know what he was measuring. I was doing the work and doing what, was, what I had promised to do, and he was measuring. So and the that same thing happened. That was the first okay. time we ever got together. There was no meeting. There was no expectation. He didn't even know what the EMF work was. I didn't know what he was doing. That, to me, is what is also very interesting about this, and to be learning from it as we are. So to me, it was already. I, I mean, that's my opinion. I don't know what. Yes. Well, you mentioned the double-blind setup, and in such a situation, I wouldn't know what the uh, um, person that I'm measuring was doing before, what kind of session they had. The only thing that I would be able to see if there is a change in the energy field. And if you then later, after uh, breaking up the double blind setup, I would uh, put these things together, what was the session, what was the measurement, we would be able to see the changes clearly, as we have seen uh, mm -hmm. in the setup that mm -hmm. we had. Now I would like to mention one more thing, uh, which I think is very important when we do this kind of measurements. When we measure people, they are involved in the measurement process. And as they do their training, they have to focus on the training. So when we had the setup, I didn't show any of the results to these persons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while we were measuring. So they didn't know what their energy field was. Only after the last day, when the mm -hmm. whole training was finished, I handed them out a, a copy of some of the measurements, not all of them. So they knew approximately what was going on, but not in the meantime. So their focus was on the EMF training, but not on the measurement. That was very interesting, and I think this was very important that we kept this protocol. Yeah, and that's, that's a really interesting point. So mm -hmm. let's take a look at the next slide. Yeah, sure. So while here we see the energy field of a person right before the session, and Peggy claims and says when using the EMF balancing technique, you will direct your energy, you will increase the energy flow, and one of the results will be more balanced. And these two images actually show a, a person before and then a person after a session, how that looks like. And, and for me, all these years, if one has spontaneous healing or spontaneous insight, there's always this increased electrical energy. And as we're getting ready to, to take another leap in our evolution, I keep telling people, you know, the buzzing, the tingling, the cold, the hot, all the different things that people feel. Um, Sometimes people may say, well, that might be stress, but there's also this energy that goes with it. And when it happens, you know it. It's electrical, it's alive, and now I'm very happy to see it's measurable, very measurable. We can uh, put up a curve and show how is the development of the balance of this person over uh, during the training. So from the first day until the last day.